Good morning, pod people, and happy vMix 21 day. This is Eric Pratt from US Broadcast, and I'm here to tell you about all of the new features that are in vMix 21. And you'd be mistaken if you thought that this entire video was going to be about color correction, but to get it out of the way right off the bat, color correction is one of the main new features in vMix 21. It's ability to do full three wheel color wheels, color bars, in conjunction with a vector scope waveform, uh, which is also new for monitoring inputs and balancing cameras. But that's not the only thing that's new in vMix 21. There's also the ability to control um, the streaming channels individually. So vMix has three different independent uh, streaming platforms. So you can stream to three different destinations, and now you can do it with independent bit rates for each and settings and you can start and stop them individually. So if one, um, if you wanna stop, for example, your YouTube feed, but keep your Facebook live for an after show, you can do those things now, as well as my favorite, a lot of new shortcuts have been added. The particular one that I'm thinking of is the set volume fade. Now it's possible via a keyboard trigger to fade audio to a certain degree over a certain amount of time, but that's by no means all of the new features in vMix 21. So let's take a look at them in particular. So let's start off with the big three features, which is color correction, independent multi-viewer control, and independent streaming configurations. So the Color corrector goes hand in hand with the vector scope uh, and waveform update. So you can see I uh, have a whole new selection of options up here from uh, vector scope and preview, uh, parade, RGB and preview, or I can just bring them up full screen and I can see what's going on in my preview and I can make adjustments to it using the new color corrector. And the color corrector doesn't just apply to cameras, though that will be its probably most common implementation. Um, it applies to any input. So this is the color corrector, and it has two different modes. It has a color wheel mode, and it has color bars. And to see what we can do with these, if we watch the vector scope over here, and I adjust the hue, you can see that that whole vector scope is spinning around. And if I adjust the saturation, you can see the vector scope is getting larger and smaller because the vector scope displays color. And then the waveform is displaying the y, uh, the, the luminance in height. So you can see the different parts of the image um, based on how bright they are. And we can use color bars from a camera to calibrate these. And if we want, we can use the lift, gamma, and gain to make subtle adjustments to the colors uh, in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So we can use these to make changes to bring our cameras into perfect alignment. So if we were using this on a real camera and I wanted to make my mid-tones bluer, I would just bring this mid-tone over or if I needed to warm things up a little bit and then if I wanted to decrease the saturation and then if I needed to bring all the uh, mid-tones up a little, I can use this to raise and lower different parts of the image. And so that is color correction and the other, one of the other neat new features is the ability to configure your um, multi-viewer. So if you go under here under multi-view layout, you can choose your different layouts and then you can customize which inputs are showing. So if you have the uh, eight input mode, this is going to be your program and preview. Um, and then you have program and preview are going to stay the same. And then you're going to have your eight that you can choose to show up down here. So previously it only showed uh, the first eight inputs, whatever they were. Now you can set them to be whatever you want them to be. Streaming control is also new. Previously when you started and stopped streaming, it happened simultaneously. And then now uh, you can use stream one quality or you can choose to have each one have its own bit rate and start and stop it individually. And that's also um, all three streams will show up here individually and you can start and stop them if you wanted to, for example, have YouTube stop before Facebook or vice versa. I'm a huge fan of shortcuts and some of the new shortcuts in vMix 21 give you the ability to control some of the new features, but one of the things that I'm most happy with is the new set volume fade 
functionality, which allows you to fade an input over time uh, through a keystroke. So if you wanted to um, make it part of a, bring an audio source up and down, this will let you do that uh, with a nice smooth ramp up or down, um, depending on what it is that you want to do, as opposed to just a hard cut, which is the way things were previously. Um, you can also uh, create a um, keyboard shortcut to do to set the outputs. So different versions of vMix have a different number of outputs. In this case, I'm using the output number two, and I can map it to be program preview or multi-view. So I can set a monitor off to the side, and I can map shortcuts to what I want to show on it or what I want to see on it. Um, there's, of course, connections for the new color correction. In this case, what I've done is I've set uh, input R to be auto to auto color correct. So if something changes in a camera scene, you can just hit the auto color correct and it will take a new stab at what it thinks that color correction should be. Uh, you can also um, make specific changes. So for example, in this one, uh, my, I've mapped the E button to increase the gain, uh, all, all three channels, R, G, and B, to a particular input and then um, we also have the ability to reset that. So, uh, and the last one, one of the new ones is the ability to show and hide uh, the big preview window. And I'll show you that in a second. And then you can start and stop, stop streaming based on an integer. So since there's three different channels, you can start and stop streaming um, stream zero, one or two. So let's just take a quick look at what those um, are. Uh, if I, use my gain, I can turn my gain up and down. So I'm turning the gain up and then I'm resetting it. So any changes that I make to that input get reset. Uh, T, that brings up my big full screen preview window. So I can just turn that on and off. And then uh, Y is the one that starts and stops the streaming. So that's th so six different shortcuts that are new in vMix 21. There's also the uh, ability to have preview boxes. So if I wanted to have a square, so if I wanted to see what my a, a square reticle looks like, or if I wanted to do a vertical 16 by nine. So if I wanted to make sure that I was in that shot, uh, that's what these are for because different platforms are capable of streaming different um, aspect ratios. So those are in there now. Uh, not a huge fan of square streaming, but uh, some people like it. and. Um, now that that guidance is there. Last but not least, there's a couple of uh, little features. Um, Windows Update is disabled while you're running vMix. That way, when you're in the middle of a live show, Windows doesn't decide to update and restart and do all kinds of things that would make live production problematic. Um, another thing that's new is the uh, performance alerts. If you start getting to 100% um, CPU or GPU, um, a little notification will come up and let you know uh, what's going on and alert you that you know you need to start freeing up some allocated resources. And then last would be the new activators over TCP/IP, which will basically open up the ability for companies to um, develop their own uh, controls and interface with vMix in a bi-directional um, method via TCP IP. So those are the new features in vMix 21. Uh, you should download and update and give it a try.